Hey everybody, continuing my favorite series here on my channel, new series where I ask somebody for their top five makeup products and I work them into a look. And I first did Pup, that's my sister, and uh, that look turned out great, I thought. It was a great everyday natural look. And now we're gonna go to my friend David. Um, he is a professional makeup artist in New York. He is the resident makeup artist for Estee Lauder at Bergdorf Goodman. And um, we met through me being on YouTube to, basically. I think he had messaged me or something way back when I was at the TV station and we just struck up a great friendship. He knows so much about makeup and something I find fascinating is that even though he works for Estee Lauder, his interest in makeup runs deep, like deep into the depths of the drugstore. And I think the first time we kind of had a get together because he is from Illinois originally as well. And I think the first time we hung out, like the time just wasn't enough for us to just sit and talk about makeup, all kinds of makeup, every different thing. He's recommending stuff to me. I'm recommending stuff to him. It could go on forever. So I consider David to be one of my best friends. I think he is a kind, good, wonderful soul. And I'm so grateful that way back when he did reach out to me because I just feel like we are very on par with one another in terms of our love for makeup. And you can check him out at makeup underscore whisperer on um, Instagram. And he does some beautiful bright looks, but he lives his day-to-day -day life just in, you know, natural face. But as he experiments with different products and stuff, you'll see his looks um, online. So when I asked for his top five, and he says he's also very good about like rotating all his products around and not just using one thing all the time. So he had to stop and think about what would the everyday essentials be. And those are what I'm going to work into the look today. Also, he has assigned me a special eye look that's rather colorful. It's using the BH Cosmetics Cosmetics Naughty Palette because that's one of the things I got him for Christmas this past year and he's loving that one. And yeah, David, I love you. I'm so thankful for our friendship. I know everyone is going to enjoy your fusion of expertise in this video. He's going to be turning 50 soon, actually, and he all he asks for is another single screws video. <laughs> but if you are anywhere in the country and you would like to chat with him or if you're wondering about Estee Lauder things and you'd like to buy through him, you can definitely do so. I'll have his work number down there below and you can just contact him and he can steer you in the right direction on products. You can make an order and you can help support the retail industry that way because it is definitely harder for the in-person brick and mortar stores these days. Everybody's doing everything online out of convenience and safety. And I think it's good to think about those people we know who are working in the retail industry right now. Thank you, David, for participating in my crazy little top five here. He texted me his pics and he says that my top five is inspired by the separate bag I've filled with essentials that go into every look and all also Desert Island picks. And I think I'm just going to reveal as we go this time instead of just laying them all out there for you at the start. So I'm first going to prime my skin. I'm using this Laura Mercier Pure Canvas Primer. It's the blurring one. I've just got some different ones from this line that I'm wanting to familiarize myself with. And I do like, it's sort of like a thick smoothing quality to this one. I feel like it would play well under the double wear. So I'm just smoothing that on. Gosh, it really mattifies too. And it dries down quickly. I do think it has a little impact on the pores as well. So David's first pick is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Makeup. He says it's the only formula that stays in place on my nose and less under eye concealer is needed with this product. Also, it can be worn sheer, medium, or full beat. So I have this in the shade 3W1 Tawny. Um, got it through David, of course. I'm going to shake that up. I mean, this is a classic product. This is one of those things that you can absolutely count on when you're thinking what's going to give me great staying power. Like no doubt you're going to get it from this. Whoa. I had a few things right out to the edge of my table. <laughs> Aggressive shaking of the foundation. But as I was saying, like the, the thing I love about this is how it really does stay sort of fresh looking till day's end. It's not simply there, but it actually looks quite good. So I'm just getting this dabbed around and I have many times blended this in successfully with a brush, but today I'm going to use a beauty blender because like I said, I feel like I'm entering, re-entering my season of the beauty blender. It's just the tool I want to use more these days. So look at beautiful coverage. I just said, look at, yeah. Now David said you can wear this sheer medium or full beat. 
Um, I definitely think full coverage, actually, when I wear this. That's what comes to mind. But I guess if you combine this with maybe a lighter moisturizer or did a little mixing with something softer or maybe used it only sparingly in certain areas of the face, in those cases, I could see this ending up being a more lightweight look. But like this, even with a beauty blender sponge, which can take maybe a hint of coverage away. I'm feeling pretty full coverage right now. The next several things from David's top five are coming right at you for this look. He's got two different kinds of concealers. One is the Bobbi Brown Under Eye Corrector. I have this here in the shade called Bisque. This is one product I've hit pan on. Um, it's an amazing color corrector. She has a nice range of these, so it's not like, oh, here's my one peachy corrector, but she's got things that go lighter and deeper than this shade that I'm holding. And and I kind of clarified with him, so this is what you're using on your darkest areas. And then he recommended the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer in the Brightener shade, which I am almost, almost out of. And he says witchcraft involved with this product. So this is more of like the all over sort of highlighting brightener. This is handling like discolored stuff. I'm going to take some of this. This was repurchased by me. Like I've gone through an entire one of these and then somewhere in the past couple years I had gotten a few Bobbi Brown things again and this was one of them. Also their creamy concealer kit where it's like the concealer, little circle concealer side by side with a powder. I got that too. But that's my main trouble spot where I would want to use this is the darkest part of the under eye and then out here. You'll notice that this shade, you know, they do have lighter options in this, but this is the color that's going to actually, I think, most effectively conceal my darkness because it's just deep enough to like really camouflage. So think about that as you're choosing. Again, my shade is Bisque. See that? And then we'll go in with the brightener. I've never actually combined this and the brightener uh, from Maybelline in the same makeup application, so it'll be fun to see how this comes together. So this whole coverage cocktail of products is going to be David recommended because he recommended the powder too. Now some all over brightening with, as you can see, this pinky toned, if you're not familiar with this, it has a pink tone to the concealer and it's got a thinness. I never feel cakey when I've got this on. It's just a terrific texture and you can wear this on its own. You can sometimes pair this like I did in a recent look with a skin tone shade. Um, but look what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna bounce the beauty blender over this and get a super brightened up look right in here. And coverage too, you know, it's not just solely brightening. You're covering things up. I'm even hitting the side of the nose down here because I really went there with this. There we are, we are brightened, we're covered. This is really fun, this is very satisfying. The next thing is number four in David's top five, um, and it is the Smashbox Step-by-Step -step Contour Kit. The three shades, he says, are all I need, and the highlight is hands down my favorite under eye brightening powder. And the cheapy brush included is useful with liquid highlighter and concealer. I don't think I have that brush, but this is what that trio looks like. Anybody familiar? I mean, I've talked about this one for going back years on my channel, but I haven't used it in a long time. We have a cool contour, kind of a bronzer shade, and then this is that brilliant highlighter shade. That's It's not a shimmer highlight, but it's just a brightening powder. And he says, I pack on the highlight shade on top of both concealers in the inverted triangle of light shape. Use a dry beauty blender for that. The brightness is blinding. All right, I got a dry one sitting over here. This is my one from e.l.f. So, all right. Go into this, got some of that powder on there. Let's see how we do. Oh my gosh, this really is brightening. Like, look at this eye compared to this eye. I already thought I was bright. It's got just a hint of yellow tone. Let's try a little over here. Oh my goodness. I shouldn't be surprised. It's what David does for a living, but dang. What a great trick. Okay, um, now I'm kind of tempted to stick a little to brighten up right in here. Oh my gosh. I really, really like that effect. And now I can just go on and use this as my contour too. I'm gonna grab my BK Beauty 107. I'm gonna go into the more grayish looking shade. Not really gray, but you know, it's the cooler one. And I'm gonna get a little bit of this around my hairline here. 
It is so much fun to use different people's top five. I love the variety that's going to come out of this series. I think I'm going to do mom next. Man, did I forget how good this little trio is. Oh my gosh. Even gives you the tips there on where to use the things. Just want to make David proud. I just don't want to screw up the look. Um, here's some bronzer type shade. I'll just go for a little bit of that up higher. The next and final thing in his top five um, are eyelashes. And I already told you he's advising me on a certain look that I need to do with the BH Cosmetics Naughty Palette. So now I guess I got a little free reign. But you want to talk about coverage. I mean, this is all David here. This is all his idea. And man, do I feel like flawless. For blush, I'm going to bring in um, a newish kind of blush from Laura Geller here. I got recently, when I was talking about those palettes in a recent video, I got a new blush from her line because I really do love her baked products. And this is Pink Buttercream. I think this has been in the line for a long, long time. It's so pigmented and gorgeous. And I'm gonna use that as my blush today. It's got a little luminosity to it, but look how, ugh. I mean, maybe it's just because I'm seeing it on top of all this perfect coverage and it just, it looks so good today. And I'm kind of focusing it right up here, like kind of up a little higher and a little more on the side of the face there. And the skin is just so, so matte right now. It's gonna be fun to see how a highlight pops on top of all this. I need a little blush on the apple of the cheek because you know, I'm a renegade like that. Listen, all of TikTok might be placing blush right out here, but I kinda need to take it to the cheek. All right. And isn't what makes life fun, the fact that we can all do things differently and in our own way, like, I noticed when I did the Glossier video, some of the pushback in the comments toward the light coverage that's offered there and people saying stuff like, well, I guess it only works if you're 15 or something like that. And I get that frustration and that's kind of how I felt my first go around like years ago using it. I remembered feeling a little resentful toward that product. But if you stop and you actually go to their website and you read the reviews of all the mature women who say that that's a godsend to them, then you start to realize, oh, I guess there's other concerns than just my own. You know, maybe I want coverage on stuff. Maybe other people just want something that's not going to enhance any texture at all. Honestly, one way to create a little more open-mindedness in yourself, and I need it too just as much, I'm not like preaching to everybody else, but um, is just to read the reviews under a product you might be considering or you that you might be critical of, any product for any reason. Read the reviews that are posted and you will see why that thing has a place for some out there and we're all different. It's nice that makeup brands are all different. It'd be boring as heck if they were all the same. And you just realize there are different needs out there. There are different concerns. And just because that product doesn't do it for you, you know, it's probably doing it for somebody else. For highlighter today, I think I am going to pull out my giant Catrice Sungasm. Have I used this on camera yet? Face and body highlight. I didn't know it was going to be this big. <laughs> Use my little Real Techniques brush here. It's so good though. So, so good. I love it. Look at this glow we are going to achieve here on top of this perfect coverage. Okay, this is real satisfaction. Putting highlight on top of perfect coverage skin, like, oh, that feels good. I feel like I am putting the sprinkles on a cake that is perfectly and evenly iced. Ah, it's singing. Do you hear it? Thank you, David. It's like he's here, even though he's not. I'm gonna let a little bit of this come up to the forehead. Kind of like to take this area. I feel like this is a tip I heard from somebody once upon a time, but like you go over the arch of your brow and you kind of swirl your highlighter upward to your hairline and something about the way that catches the light is supposed to be good. And then Cupid's bow. And then I think because we are so matte with the exception of this highlight now, I'm gonna use something that's gonna make the skin look just a little more dewy. So therefore I'm gonna use the Soothing Face Mist from Glossier because I just, I sense a real effect from this. So take in the skin the way it's looking now and then Best rosy scent. Then I feel like we get even more dewiness. And it's not like I have a heavy amount, like I'm kind of misting it up, letting it fall, it ends up being the perfect amount of setting spray. Now I'm on my own for brows. I can do whatever I want. I'm gonna do the e.l.f. Lock-On um, Brow Cream here in the shade Espresso. I just really love this stuff. It's a brow cream, but it's also creamy enough to be a liner too. 
So if you're looking for a little multitasking, affordable two-in-one, check it out. And I'm just using it with my e.l.f. brush also. Double-ended with the spoolie. Anytime you're going through your brows with some kind of pomade, just got cut off as I was saying, um, you're going to keep using the spoolie, flipping back to it to help that creamy product work on through. I'm doing the brows, but I'm getting distracted by the cheek. By the way, that Catrice Sungasm highlight is way better, in my opinion, than this one. This More Than Glow highlight. This one just doesn't pick up as strongly on the brush, whereas the Sungasm one is just super duper smooth and like soft. Plus it's just in that universal kind of pearly brightening tone that I think can work on anybody. I always question my symmetry. I'm gonna apply a little bit of gel on top. This is just my clear gel from M Cosmetics. And that can kind of perk up some of these hairs right here. I like this gel, but it, you don't feel like anything is gooping up your brush. You might even question whether anything's there, but there is. <laughs> it's like the most cleaned off brush in history though. All right, gang, you know what time it is. <laughs> Time to squeeze out the last remaining bit of my Milani eyeshadow primer. Uh, oh my gosh. That may have been it. I've never squeezed that hard. It was holding out for David's big look. And I'm a little nervous because I'm gonna try to do a David look. It's gonna be colorful, it's gonna be fun. He has shown me the look, he has given me the instruction. I did wake up an extra half hour early <laughs> today because I thought this might take some time. So yeah, 4.30. Let me grab some coffee for crying out loud. I got a fun creamer and I guess it's the Funfetti creamer. I don't know why I went for it, but I did. And I'm expecting my coffee to taste a whole lot more like Funfetti cake than it does. It's just kind of vanilla-y. I mean, I didn't put that much in, I guess, but let me pop up the look for you that he did. It's gorgeous. And I think this was the result of a palette bingo that he did with the BH Cosmetics Naughty Palette, which I raved about and recommended around holiday time. But he said he did an olive green cream shade inner half and a blue violet cream shade outer half. I need to round those up. Hang on. And friends, this is the Naughty Palette if you didn't know about it. BH Cosmetics absolutely slayed this thing. Like we've got large size shadows, we've got brilliant pigmentation, just a beautiful fun grouping of shades. And while the packaging screams Christmas, time to me. The colors in here are certainly any day, you know, so that's what we're using shadow wise, but I think I found some things that can prep the eye. I have this Nude Sticks Magnetic Luminous Eye Color in Night Dweller, and I think this may work for the olivey toned base. It's kind of like a murky blue-green. So let's just dab that right in here. I definitely am not working with cream bases enough. Got a lot of cream shadows that I could be getting more use out of, you know? Best I could find for blue-violet is this kind of purpley shade here. It's the Orchid Caviar Stick from Laura Mercier. This may not be quite the depth that he was thinking of, but I think it's still gonna base the shadow okay. Like it's gonna get a lot deeper and darker with a certain shadow on top of that, I hope. So he figured out what to use for this look through a palette bingo. So I've marked those shades that are involved in this look. Here's Snow Day, here's Nutcracker, Coal, Mistletoe, and Brick. And so I'm thinking it's kind of Nutcracker and Brick in the outside, creating that berry sort of flare. We've got this on the outer lid, this olive on the inner lid, and he said he just used coal, this black kind of smudging, like getting right up in the lash line and the depth of the crease. All right, so what a random selection of shades. I mean, that's why palette bingo is fun, right? Because you just don't know what kinds of things you're gonna turn out like that. I'm wondering where to start. I think maybe the crease berry type stuff so I can make sure that my lid doesn't get dulled down. With Brick and Nutcracker here, Brick looks like the lighter of the two. And yeah, here we go. And right upon starting, I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. I'm using my Sigma E25 brush right now and I'm no doubt gonna pull in something a little bit smaller to help me get more precise, but I'm gonna let this come to the full crease. 
It's funny how pinky this shade is coming off, this brick color, because look, it's rather dark in the pan. But as it shears, we're getting a lot of like pinky vibe. I'm gonna grab my E27, so like the baby sized E25, and go into some Nutcracker now. And I'm gonna work that into my crease and pay a little bit more attention to shape now. He's got a nice like outer V. I can tell there's a small gap between the edge of his shadow and the brow. So I'm gonna really try to use my space and work it up to that level. See that? I think that's kind of accurate to what he did. This is so much fun. Maybe I just need to <laughs> copy all David's looks. Or just palette bingo more of my palettes because the randomness and making that randomness work is so fun. See what we're doing here? Just building up and out in the direction of the brow. And then I think he said he went in with even just a little bit of the coal right in the deepest crease zone. Can see that okay these shades are so pigmented though gosh it only takes a little bit to get whatever your job is done here we go perfection so so pretty i can't wait to start playing on the lid but those are our berry kinds of colors the coal now we need to start working with i think ho oh, no no <laughs> Um, that's going to be this fun bluish pop with a flat brush. We'll see how this works on top of the base I put on. I think this is going to be plenty intense to where, you know, I didn't have to prep the lid with the very same shade. Because look at that. How fun. Oh my gosh, that shade is just glorious and so satisfying. Look at this. Like blueberry. Berries and cherries. Oh, how fun. I feel like I need a little more creasiness, just whatever's left on this brush, to come right in here as we start packing on this kind of olive shade. And for that, I'm gonna grab a different flat brush. So this is mistletoe right here. So that's gonna just lay right down on that pretty base. Which, the purpose of doing a base is like you're going to intensify your shadow. You're also going to give that shadow even more to cling to. Look at that. Just kind of bringing it into overlap a little bit. So pretty. And there are even lighter greens in here too. Green is really a nice feature in this palette. Just barely starting to overlap the blue. I might even let that green just creep up right here, I'm looking at the picture where he's looking down ever so slightly. Oh, love. On the lower lash line, I think I'm seeing a little, maybe a hint of the greenish color merging into some of the berry and definitely some black is there as well. I'll need some black liner going across the top, but I'm not quite there yet. Let's smudge a little bit of mistletoe right in here. Just that innermost part from what I can see. Then we will continue out with some Nutcracker and just kind of work in some of the black as needed. I need to line the waterline with something dark. Now David's giving you a blue-eyed take on this look and now for me you're going to see it on brown eyes. So I'm using this black liner from Revlon and I'm going to get that in my lower waterline. He said black liner there. And then I'm going to use some of that black eyeshadow, just smudging. The lack of fallout from these shades is also incredibly impressive. Famous last words right before I go into the black. Pull just a little bit of that smudginess, but still I felt like I was seeing some berry out from under it, so I won't go too hard with it. Okay, very good. Let's stick a little brick coming in here, softening, and kind of reaching up to my outer shadow. Liner, I'm just going to use my Milani 17 Hour Stay Put Matte, and then I will apply that Snow Day shade for a little lightness around the inner corner. He doesn't look glaringly bright there, but I uh, noticed that was in his hashtags for shades used, so. Couple little touch up y kind of things. I need more darkness. Just kind of going between Nutcracker and Cole. I need a little more right in here. It's like sometimes you just need to see the liner applied before you realize. The blue 
is seeming plenty present. Um, I may feel like I'm losing the olive just a bit. I realize this Profusion Flat Precise Eyeshadow Brush can be a nice little thing for just something precise right around like an inner corner. There's a little bit of Snow Day there. Now I'm wondering if Snow Day was in the hashtag just because he was having a snow day or because he used the shade. So I don't see a lot of it in his look, but boom, there we go. And I'm laying down just a bit more of that mistletoe olive green. It's on a pretty small surface area here on my eye, but I think we got it. Now I'm going to apply mascara, pop on the lashes, and I'll be right back. Mascara on, I had to show, these are the lashes. This was also something that I gave him at Christmas time because I love this style so much. The Silk Noir from Salon Perfect, the 652s. So I'm gonna apply those. I'll need to give him just a little bit of a trim off the outside, but um, I'm gonna pop these on in the spirit of time and battery life. I'm gonna stop this and then we'll come back and do the lips. Here we go, guys. Look at that eye. Oh, gosh. I love that look so much. I can't get over it. Um, the next thing, he said, line the lips with any wine shade. I got Urban Decay Hex here. And your favorite frosty, rosy pink lipstick. Don't purchase a new lipstick. Just use something you like. Shoot. Battery light is flashing. Camera is about to cut me off, but I used the Hex lip liner. I had to do this off camera because of my flashing battery situation. And the Flower Mix and Matte Lip Duo in Tickled Pink. So it's a lipstick that gives the overall color and then kind of that frosty shine from the gloss. David, thank you so much for participating in this look. I loved how the coverage products came together in his top five. So we're talking Double Wear, the Bobbi Brown, the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind, setting it with the Smashbox. His other top pick um, was actually the Lash. And then, you know, he told me to use the BH Cosmetics palette for the eye look. And I couldn't be happier with how this came together. I hope I made you proud, David. Thank you for watching. And I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye.